When installing an IP security system, you typically have about the length of a single football field to work with, since your standard Ethernet cable can only carry data up to about 300 feet. If you're using some kind of power over Ethernet extender, you can stretch the reach of your Ethernet cables up to about three football fields. But what if you need to go further than this? Like, much further. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can extend your surveillance system's reach across up to 100 football fields. Hi there, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in today's video we're going to show you how you can extend your network connection across crazy long distances using Ubiquiti's Nanostation Loco M5 unidirectional radios. These two little Ubiquiti radios offer an excellent and very quick way to set up a point-to-point -point bridge network from one radio to the other. Now these are unidirectional radios, so they do have to be facing each other because the radio signals only travel in one direction. But as long as there is a clear sign of light, a clear sign of light, but as long as there is a clear line of sight between these two radios, the distance that the data can travel across these radio waves is up to 10 kilometers or more, which is about six miles. These are the perfect solution if you need to extend your network, say from your house to a barn or to a shed, maybe across a parking lot or from one building to another, Whatever your unique situation might be, Ubiquiti Nanostation radios offer a great way for you to connect a security camera to your main network, even if it's miles away. So you can purchase these radios from us in two different ways. First, you can just pick them up individually. You can pick up however many you need, but you can also purchase these as a pre-configured set. If you do purchase this in a pair, we will do everything on our side to get this set up and working for you. So all you have to do is plug these in and you're essentially good to go. You won't have to do any of the configuration on your side. The downside to this is if you need more than two radios, uh, you're going to have to just buy them individually and set them up yourself. Plus, purchasing them as pre-configured pairs just doesn't give you as much control over your system. But for many people, all you need is a very simple solution that you just plug in and it's good to go. So we have that for you here if that's the kind of solution you're looking for. If you have multiple radios that you need to install, or if you just want a little bit more control, Again, you can pick these up individually, just purchase however many you need, and do all the configuration yourself. Now, it might look a little bit scary at first and sound kind of confusing, but these are actually pretty simple to set up, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So let's jump right in. You can see here we have the radio. It's pretty simple and straightforward. We have the pole mount on the back. We also have this release button that allows you to open up the cover on the front and that is where our LAN port is. You'll just plug this directly into this proprietary PoE uh, power supply. You also have a zip tie for securing your nano station to a pole. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get our radios configured. And it's always best to do this in a test bench scenario, just so you know that everything is working properly before you take it out to the installation site. We have our PoE power supply. These are proprietary, so you can't use just any PoE power supply to power this thing. The cool thing about this is it is wall mountable, if that's something you need. So let's get this plugged up. First, we're going to plug our nano station into the PoE adapter where it says PoE. Then we're gonna plug this adapter into our network switch where it says LAN, and we'll plug this into an outlet. Once we plug this in, our device is now set up on the network. And you can see we have lights in the back that indicate that we have power and LAN. Now we're going to hop on the computer. To find your device's interface, simply open up a web browser and type 192.168.1.20 into the address bar. That is the default IP address of these radios. Once you get to that website, it will have a security warning for you. You can just ignore this and go ahead and log in with the default username and password both of which are UBNT. All we're gonna do is go here into the wireless tab. By default, this is gonna be set up as a station, but this first one we're actually going to set up as an access point. The access point is going to act as our network sender. It's going to take the signal from our network and it's going to send it to our receiver. So we will change this to access point. 
we will enable WDS. Take note of this SSID. We're going to need this when we set up our receiver. Once everything is the way it needs to be, go ahead and click change. At this point, it may or may not ask you to change your password. That's fine. Just go ahead and change it to whatever you need to and apply. Now this is going to reboot. The next thing we want to do is change the IP address of this radio to avoid IP conflicts with our second radio and with any other devices that may be on our network. To do this, first we're going to click on network. Make sure this is on static IP address. And now we're going to change the address here to 192.168.2. If you think of your network like a highway, all we're doing here is essentially changing lanes to avoid any traffic jams. And I will leave that host as dot 20. And that's it. Our first radio, the access point is now configured. So go ahead and leave that one plugged in and powered up and connected to our network. Now we're going to grab our second one and plug it in right next to it. This is essentially going to be the same process. We're going to log back into that interface, which again, by default is 192.168.120. And we're going to head back to the wireless tab. Here we are going to leave this as a station because the station is the receiver. It's going to receive the signal from the access point and transmit that to the remote location. Again, we will make sure that WDS is selected here. And now we just need to link this up to the access point that we configured earlier. To do this, we are simply going to type in our access points SSID right here. If you remember, we left that SSID as UBNT. And since that's the default, we are good to go. One more step, just like the first one, we will change this IP address. We'll get it onto that 192.168.2 network ID to prevent any IP conflict. And this one, we will change the host ID to dot 21. At this point, if I was setting up multiple radios, I would give each one its unique number, dot 22, dot 23, so on and so forth. And honestly, that's it. We are going to click change and apply those changes. And both of our Ubiquiti radios are now set up and configured. We can take those off the test bench now and go set them up at our installation site. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna set these up here in our warehouse in opposite corners of the room. All right, here on the Northwest corner of our warehouse, we have our access point. So I have this connected to power here and I have this connected to our main network. So this radio is picking up our network signal and it's sending it all the way across the room over here to our southeast corner. This is the station. It's connected to power, but it's not connected to our network. Again, it's just receiving those network signals all the way from the other side of the warehouse. It's taking that signal and it's outputting it into this four port PoE switch, which I have connected to the LAN port on our PoE injector for the Ubiquiti radio. And there we go, I've plugged this in. The camera is connected to our network and it is working perfectly, getting that signal from across the warehouse. Again, this works because we have a clear line of sight between these two radios. It doesn't matter if this is across the warehouse, across the parking lot, across the street. Again, this could go up to six miles if there's a clear line of sight between the two radios and it will still work. Let's hop back on that interface and we can check out the signal between these two access points. And there we go, we are getting an excellent signal from across that warehouse using just these two radios. These Ubiquiti radios obviously work great with security cameras, with setting up large systems, especially in remote locations, but it also works for other scenarios where you need to extend your internet for long distances up to six miles. It's a great way to get Wi-Fi to your shed or to your barn. It's a great way to connect a computer. These are very versatile and flexible tools that can really be used for a lot of scenarios. Be sure to check out those links in the description below to see where you can pick up your Ubiquiti Nanostation Loco M5. Again, you can purchase these individually. You can purchase these as a pre-configured pair. It totally depends on your needs and your preferences. If you have any questions at all, feel free to hit us up. Our contact info is down below. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, go ahead and like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us across social media, and we will see you next time.